Group ships. Staggered line. Chipmaster. They outnumber us three to one. Then it is an even fight. All cruisers fire at will. Burn their mongrel hides. Crew's ship isn't taking part in the attack. He must have gone to ground. Roger that, ma'am. We're on him. Kick the door. Hey there, Cannonites. Welcome back to Halo Cannon. Let's lure for Halo 3's level, The Ark. Joined today by I'm uh, by Mendicant Bias from uh, the Halo Archive and Halo Archive's media person. <laughs> uh, media Bias, or Persico. <laughs> Say hi, guys. Hey, how you doing? Hola. That is not the right language. <laughs> And oh, always love that love beautiful. This. Yeah, just looking up there, the you can see the the, the explosions and the galaxy as a whole. It's just beautiful. It's very interesting to see the Marines' reactions. Like they're just as astonished as Chief was that they're outside of the galaxy. Like, yeah. They yeah. Have a job to do. It's actually amazing when you think about it. we're two, over two thousand uh, or two hundred thousand light years from galactic center, and yet you can still see the whole Milky Way. Oh yeah, no light pollution. It's just pure bliss. Yeah, I guess. This is, you know, probably more of an artistic license, but still really damn cool to see. I was like, this line, it's like, Chief, eyes on. It's like, you comparing me to a cyborg? <laughs> this is something. I guess no stealth through this, then. <laughs> stealth is for pussies. Yeah, yeah, that was my bad on that. I just, I had a shot. Oh god, suicide grunts, I forgot they do that. <laughs> Why do I always forget the suicide grunts? Shit. Yeah, you know, I... Uh, I hate to just, like, start right off the bat saying, um, you know, bringing up what we see uh, in the Halo 3, or Halo E3 trailer in 2013 when, you know, yeah. possibly on the arc, but I'm looking out there and it just, if you look at those mountains and those, you know, jagged rocks, it just, it just reminded me of it really, uh, Really cool. Oh yeah, it that, that that's like why everybody like all the the big lore fans said right away said the arc. Like I thought I, when I first saw that and I went straight online and said, "Dude, guys, that's the arc." I thought like, "Oh yeah, no one's gonna believe this." But then it's everybody's like, "Yeah, that probably is the arc." It's like really I mean, awesome. It's not hard I'm not that conclusion either when the Rubicon was just at the arc to investigating its yeah uh, remnants and, and then yeah the, yeah still be there and there was the story of Petra talking about how there might be more at the arc which was you know so there's just so many so many things coming together in such a way that the arc just seems to be the obvious answer well to this day we still don't know what Cortana solution was we exactly yeah before that the rings have treasury like functions and that's new to all of us yeah so he said that there might be a way to defeat the flood without activating the rings and we went to the yeah. arc it very well may be there still yeah sure. and the, there's uh, what, uh what's his name uh harvestus uh was talking he's always talking about um that one line uh from the terminals um it's like what are you all my all our makers once held beer alexandria before the fire so what could that be with, with, uh, you know, referring to well, actually, he brought it up to me, and I feel pretty dumb for not noticing, but that's referencing the great uh, library. <laughs> yeah. Band. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, there's the, it's a direct reference to that, so... But, it, you know, and it's one of those terms where it's, uh, you know, the Forerunner systems, that was the closest approximation it could come to whatever the AI was talking about, so... It's like, it just makes you wonder what, uh, what might be buried here. 
and mendicant bias. I mean, yeah, but there you go. That's the, that's like one thing I definitely think about for, right there, mendicant bias. Alexandria before the fire almost sounds a little bit like I know the domain's like probably not around anymore, but it sounds like it might be a reference to that or something similar. Well, don't yeah, forget that the foreigners are backing up all the information from the domain, so yeah, the so well may be present like as a backup here. Ah, it very well could be. Yeah, there's there's so many possibilities, and that is that is definitely the thing I like about three four three the yeah. most. It's just all there's this huge lore that they are very clearly investing in. It definitely I mean it when uh you know when we hear is it the librarian that says to the absolute record in Spartan Ops? Um, yeah. When I forget what episode, is it episode eight or nine or something, but I think um, it's episode nine, but I'm not sure. Episode nine, okay. But you know, everyone like you guys I mean, I don't know if you guys have brought this up, but Everyone was wondering, you know, where is the absolute record? Everyone's thinking it's the Ark, because where else would they have kept it? It seems like the most logical solution, and the Library of Alexandria could very well have something to yeah. do with it. So while we won't activate it, always fun to just take a peek at where the terminals are. <laughs> and I know the last time we tried to record this, Mario was saying uh, how the text-based terminals were probably one of the coolest things in this game. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoyed those... I like the like I love the visual representation that we get in Halo 4, but it's just it's kind of more mysterious having to read it and decipher it. I think. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm also fun. glad that 343 cleared it up that Chief actually accessed or at least did indeed come across the terminal. So I would like to see his reaction and interpretation of the information presented and how he just feels about reading the demise of the forerunners and like his own personal thoughts about that because we don't oh, yeah. see the chief side of things and I know a lot of people don't like it but 343 did a damn good job highlighting in Halo 4 that you know chief is indeed a human he's just in armor you know he still has emotions no matter how suppressed he's still he's still a human and I can't wait to see how much further they push that button with you know his own personal thoughts his resolve his his everything like what is chief what is chief going to do with all the information he's been gathering over the last few decades yeah and also like I'm just, I really want to know like exactly the context of these terminals like uh, they because they mention them in Halo Primordium where it says you know you know, well, we have these these terminals from the Ark that seem to be very different from what we're hearing from, uh, you know, this uh, spark, you know, this um, damaged armature armature of a monitor. So, there's so many mysteries to explore. You know. <laughs> oh wait, you were you meant? Wait, you mentioned uh, you know, like Ch Chaka? Or Chaka? Yeah, Chakas. Yes, uh, okay. I, I should have said the name, <laughs> but you know, like in Primordium where. You know everything that we're learning, both just throughout the whole uh, former saga, seems to heavily contradict what uh, we learn about in the terminals in so many ways. And then we get that direct confirmation: it's like, yes, it does. We acknowledge this, and there's probably a reason for that. Right. We want to know. What, I want have to wonder what that reason is. But the cool thing is, Oni's not aware that they're two didacs. They're not yep. aware that. You know, you have the year didact, and I say two didact, but I'm still of the firm belief that we're dealing with foreign seller. And I'm pretty sure in Salentium, he even says, like, I'm just acting on the didact's behalf, and he's just serving for his civilization. But point being, there's two didacts. They're not aware of the distinction between the ISO and your didact. So when you have, you know, the Eternals in Halo 3, all being about you know not activating the rings and preserving the races and fighting to the last man and then you have you know the ones in halo 4 showing a different picture it's like you know what's going on it's hard for them to it's because we're just different yeah. we don't mutate we don't we don't really do all of that and it's going to be interesting to see how oni kind of reacts to how I alien the foreigners are <laughs> exactly <laughs> <a> computer <laughs> Oh, I actually just got sniped in the face, mannequin. Oh, God. Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> ah! 
Oh, it's exploding. I really Ooh, like the art, the architecture of the art. Oh, it's pretty yeah. cool. The arc's see. architecture. Yeah. Arc, arc, arc. Yeah, I, I thought this, this level and uh, the covenant, the, I think it's the following level. Um, yeah. Were the best, the best levels in Halo Three by oh. far. If, if nothing else, <laughs> just because I, I really enjoyed, like you said, the architecture. It was, it had such a different feel than. Halo to me. Oh yeah. And it's cool that we're given an explanation later on as to why, because Salentio makes it known that, you know, we have different clans of builders working together, one might get contracted to do a specific job. So that gives us a lore explanation for, you know, why these installations might vary so much in function or appearance, because you have different sets of builders. You know, working on them, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> I just spawned on you, and you fell. <laughs> I crouched. <laughs> Hi, Johnson. Almost got a wing shot off. But we spotted a structure on the other side. Johnson. Of okay. So. It just reminded me. There's. Uh, I don't know if you had read. Um, what? Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Mendicant to you, Nihilus Shadow. I don't know if that's. Yeah, Nihilus. Yeah, Nihilus. Shadow. Okay. Um, he wrote a. A theory, and I don't know if it was, you know, exclusively his or anything, but he wrote a theory about, um, actually, you know, Jameson Locke potentially being, uh... Oh, Johnson's Johnson. son, right? Yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, well, that kind of got disproved with the catalog, though, sadly. Uh oh, did it? Fun. Oh, yeah, catalog, like, instantly said right off the bat. I think, like, for its second post that they're not related, it was like, oh, that's a... That's a bummer. <laughs> I know, it's... It, 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 is a few people brought up it would almost kind of be like this kind of very risque to kind of do that that the the one major black guy in the universe is the father of the second major black guy in the universe <laughs> it's like it's cool yeah i mean like is i would really like to see um like one of the kids of johnson because it, it seems like he could have had kids at some point there there were definitely plenty of opportunities and I, I think it would be really cool for one of them, maybe even to be a Spartan, but certainly well, just to show see, off. On the, on the other side of that, like, conversation, no one had a problem with Miranda and Keys being in the same universe. It's, like, the exact same situation. Like, literally the same situation. Yeah. I mean, it really is. And it, it, it really, in the case of, of Locke and Johnson, it just comes out... <laughs> Just reminded of Catalog's post again. If Locke Johnson persists for more than four hours, <laughs> see good medical professional. Is that what it uh, said? Yeah, that's what that was the the response. If Locke Johnson <laughs> <laughs> persists for more than oh shit, I'm sorry, dude. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Again. <laughs> oh god, why did it spawn you behind me? What the fuck? Okay, um. <laughs> Wow. What do you guys think about the artificial suns? I think that's a pretty cool element that really doesn't get a lot of recognition. You mean uh, like the ones at the arc here, at the arc here, yeah, or the just look up? Oh, oh yeah, I know. It's got the artifact. The uh... but yeah, it's de it's really one of the cooler aspects of this. I think is that actually reminds me. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> that is. I actually uh, never looked up at it. That's... Yeah. There's a really good picture of it at, on uh, Halopedia, and you actually get to see oh. how it looks up in space. Um, but I was going to say, there was like a recent post on Waypoint about, you know, why uh, Requiem Star, I can't remember how to pronounce it at the moment, uh, went supernova at the end of Spartan Ops. There's a big discussion about why that happened. Oh, the sun? Oh, you're talking about when yeah. Requiem went into the sun? Yeah. Well, it's Just, because like, cause we're talking about... It's so much matter that you're oh, yeah. projecting into the sun, it's going to cause a reaction, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, there's all those, gra oh yeah, I, there's all those uh, artificial gravity systems in there that could easily just cause, cause start the chain reaction. It could, um, I think it was JSA suggested it could be a part of a forerunner uh, safety system in case the shield world ever got infected by the flood. To send it in there, go supernova, cleanse the system. Yeah, all that for those of you that don't know... JSA on Waypoint is actually one of the admins. Um, well, he former admin. He's part of the staff now on the Halo Archive. Oh, did not know he was only staff now. 
Yeah, he's been, I think he's been busy. I feel like we could have cool. advertised that aspect a lot better because it's he's been with us for like two, three years, and no one really, no one really knew that tidbit. Pretty interesting to see Look, the reactions up. when it comes to that. Sorry, JSA. <laughs> we'll, we'll make it known you're with us more often. <laughs> yeah. I always love this part. It really oh does. yeah. It sucks because the UNSC ships, they're big, but if Shadow's Intent were to land in the same area, it would be a completely different um, oh, yeah. picture. I mean, yeah, you, you, you can really see that like at the beginning of ODST when you can, like, you know, you got the, the Regrets Carrier trying to leave and you can, like, if, it's only like the, fan, the hardcore fans noticed, hey, if you really look, you can see this tiny dot that's supposed to be, uh, the forward under, or the in amber clad, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool, too. I cannot wait for Halo 2 anniversary. Jesus. Oh, oh my god. god. Those cutscenes are beautiful. Amazing. Alright, I, um, I have to say, you know, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, I don't want to, I'm not bash. I'm not trying to bash Halo 4 or anything. But the one thing that was disappointing to me um, in in Halo 4, and I hope they kind of change this going forward, is you know you can hear now how the music is very present. It's loud, but it's not to the point where it's just overbearing. But there were a lot of moments in Halo 4 where the mu I mean the music that Neil Davidge did was amazing. But there were a lot of moments that I didn't really hear in the game, and I hope they kind of mix the audio in a little louder for the music in the, in the next game because I think it really you know just gave it that, that epic feel. You know what's really funny? How I can't tell you how many complaints I've heard about the music being too loud in Halo 4. Really? It's cr I'm, I'm not, yeah, loud. I never thought, I, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I've heard so many complaints about this. I don't, which I don't get, especially when there's like moments in Halo 2 especially where the audio mixing is so bad you can never, you just can't hear what the characters are saying over the music. I'm thinking of yeah. the bridge. What I forgot what the level's called on Halo 2, but the bridge where you take the tank, the music is loud. It's very. Loud. I know what you're talking like, about. I can't think of which one. Which I forgot the mission. It's yeah. been way too long. Um, yeah, well, I should know it. I just I've been playing Halo 2 a lot lately, especially the campaign. You guys, you guys think the music in Halo 4 is loud? I thought it was. No, I don't. No, no, I'm not. This isn't me. This is just no, what no, I've no, heard from others. Saying, that was one thing that I disliked about Halo 4 was how it was too quiet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I feel oh, yeah. like the tracks in Halo 4, there were plenty of ones that were not in the game that were a lot better. Uh, Chronarch and Lord of Admirals, they talk about that a lot in our Bungie camps, how they could have picked the tracks better to go with certain scenes, they could have upped the value. But then again, yeah. 343, we always have to remember, in terms of Halo 4, it's literally their first game. And yeah. I, I like that they've been humble with the responses and you know they've never gotten nasty they've said you know we understand they're looking at the feedback they take it on yeah their personal day. they improve and i i really respect that because oh hell yeah the next few games they're going to be amazing because you know they sit back they go through the feedback and while you know kind of please everyone could be a bad thing you know they're bad aspects of that but you're definitely going to have plenty of positive outcomes when you sit back and go over the feedback and say okay i can see what they mean by this you know, maybe we should have done it this way, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's going to be interesting to see how all that feedback, you know, gets generated into the next few set of games and how different they are because of our feedback. Oh, yeah. Especially, like, Halo 5 is already looking like they're saying no more armor abilities, just these new, whatever they are, Spartan abilities. Yeah, which are, you know, game new game mechanics that everyone... Now, I, I'm okay, like, I saw, you know, I just, we saw... A few glimpses of them, and I'd be okay with that. I mean, I think, yeah, I think, uh, I think it looks, it looks more like it would actually help gameplay. It's not gonna break gameplay, at least. From, yeah. I mean, the very brief moment that we saw it. Yeah, and yeah, it's all pre-rendered too, so it's really hard to say how that's gonna come right. up in final in the final game. But we'll see when the beta comes out late at the end of the year. So. Oh God, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm so excited. I just, you know, I'm. I'm <laughs> Fall is fall in, in general is, is my favorite time of the year and it's just you know you've got my favorite sports start back up the great video games come out and it just always reminds me of Halo because every Halo games come out in the fall. Yeah. 
Let's say, like, I've never noticed this, like, really early on. It's only within, like, the last year or so that I've noticed this. The fact that this door is sparking and actually struggling to open. Oh, yeah. I guess, it, yeah. It's like, it's like, you know, it's one of the tiny little details you never really notice. You really, like, look at how dirty, like, a lot of these surfaces are. Especially like this this walkway. I, I mentioned this, the first the first playthrough. This uh, this right here, this like little structure right here on this wall. It kind of oh, at yeah. first glance reminded me of um, the map Epitaph or however you say it. Um, yeah, Epitaph. With that, you know, with what was thought to p potentially be a holog uh, hologram of Mexican and bias. I'm yeah. very surprised that you brought that up because in all my years I've never really gave it that much thought. And you're right, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, light bridges. And hey, another terminal. <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely. this causeway is, and it makes you wonder, like, look at it, look at the bottom. Yeah. That, wow. What else what? is here? There's so much more about the arc we do not know. Oh yeah, so much. I mean, we'd spend a grand total of two missions on this level. Granted, the, the longest two missions in the game, but still, just those two missions. Oops, scare him. Scare about that. <laughs> How many times have you yeah. gotten stepped on by this thing? <laughs> Library of Alexandria. Yep. Quick, take it down! I I'm sure this will work. Mendicant is just, it looks so cool. Say what? The structure. The uh, library. Yeah. Of Alexandria. Or the, uh... All I really have to give it a chronic for that. For so many years, I was really stuck on that quote. I was in here thinking the librarian's name might be Alexandria and all this stuff. He was like, yeah, you know, for someone who likes a lot of history, you're forgetting one of the most um, important structures. And I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't do too well with that. Oh, I wanted to go up that. <laughs> Now, uh, Toa, I don't know if you've seen us going crazy, um, now, I feel bad because I forget his name, but we've been talking to one of the level designers for pretty much all of the Yeah, episodes. dude, I've, I've, sa I've been saying that, uh, Paul Russell, right, if, if I recall? Yeah, yes, he's yeah. an amazing guy, and I urge everyone to look him up and, you know, check out, his check out the, his responses. oh yeah, the, uh, those but, were just, Amazing, especially like this idea that the flood was originally just a simple bioweapon and what it's evolved into since then. And right. Pretty much all of this he, he that we're looking. Or go ahead. Can, uh, no, I just they actually confirmed that originally forerunners were intended to be human. Yeah, there's been a we've gotten like glimpses and hints of that. I think Evil Auto once said that that was the original plan. It's still cool to really hear that yeah. from one of the one of these guys that's been so involved with Halo since the beginning. I mean, like, you look at all this uh, this stuff we're looking at, if I recall, like, this is pretty much mostly him. This was, mo yeah, you know, a lot... Yeah, did majority of the glyphs that we're now seeing in Yeah, oh, and there, there we go. Today. You're the only one alive, Mendicant. Okay, yep. I'm running. Yep. But, you know, yeah, especially, like, I love reading that the Eld, which we have put so much, <laughs> so much importance yeah, in, is like, character. it's like, oh, it's just a random thing that I put together. It's like, oh, really? We thought it looked cool. <laughs> yeah, and then we all we all attach we attached all this uh, importance to it, which turned out to be utter bullshit. And only with three <laughs> the ad only only with three four three taking over did it become a real uh, an important thing. Well, the reason I bring him up is because if you look at that structure, it is very similar to the last city. And oh yeah, we've seen that brought up again by 343 and Origins, we know for a fact that it's going to appear later on in the lore, and it's just, it's truly interesting to see how much he was involved with the story, and how much 343 is going back, and they're looking at, you know, these original concepts, they're looking at what Bungie wanted to do, what Bungie was so adamant to include in the lore, even like offhand, and they're going back and saying, okay, they weren't able to do this. You know, let's incorporate this to, in the lore now. Let's see how we can make it fit. Um, let's try giving it the same depth and meaning that they wanted to originally have. Like, people don't understand how much 343 has gone back 
looked at all of these concepts and they're slowly starting to bring them in. Like, yeah, there's plenty of hints. Like Petra and Lasky were brought up in Evolution. And yeah, and spe like, especially Lasky. Yeah. Wait, 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 when? when um, when? there's a brief mention of a, of Petra's best friend named Tom, which is confirmed by Chris Schlurf to be a reference to Tom Lasky. Um, you know, three years before Halo 4 came out. And we get we got him brought up again in the Thursday, right? Or was it Glass? Yeah. Like one of the. Uh, no, Thursday War. Okay, and we got they that. like he's very briefly mentioned. And then we got him uh, in Ford and Dawn, and we got him in Halo 4. So it shows that, you know, when someone's saying you might be overlooking something 343 did, it's just a random thing. Most likely it isn't, because they're, they're excellent at foreshadowing. Oh so my god, yeah. When we're going back and we're looking at, you know, these concepts for The Last City, and we're seeing the exact same thing being brought up in Origins, you know, it's going Which, to yeah, be that was a like... pretty big deal. Like that was a big like thing of like where did where did where did the inspiration for all these things come from? You see all these, you know, references to Halo art, um, concept art, but uh, the Lo the last city or lost city, whatever it was, you know, that one that one just came out of the blue and only recently been was only recently confirmed as this old design that kind of got thrown out. So. Um, because we asked him, like, we yeah, exactly, communicating him on Twitter, and he's really open. The you know the fans asking questions and he confirms a lot of things and he gives us plenty of information. I gotta get in contact with them again and see you know if it'd be all three of us can do a podcast with them. It'd be really interesting. Yeah, that'd be Down really point. damn cool. And silent deal. <laughs> Bomb before the storm. Yep. And it's like especially you see all these closed doors. Just makes you wonder where they all lead. And the last terminal, just for just to this, show people off. This is the this is actually the terminal where they mention uh, Alexandria. This one, yep. but, to in, but yeah. Anyway, this exact um, you see where you're at, Persico. This exact little hallway mimics the one in Halo CE, I believe, with the gold elite, and you're trying to open up one of the. Oh uh, yeah. Or, or hold yeah. on, look. which hallway? Come back where we just came from. Right or, okay. Yeah, you just came right this little. Oh yeah, it does. I never really thought about as I never like looked at it from this perspective. Wow. But yeah, same design or you know, you had to design a lot of that stuff in nice C too. So. Yeah. Well, now you know where the Covenant got their love of purple. <laughs> Wasn't a and it's like Joseph like looking deep down again. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. I'm sorry, what were you saying though? Oh, I was just um asking if it was Burn. Satan who was the one that decided the Covenant's primary color would be purple. I think so, but I don't remember. I'm sure someone is gonna correct me on the exact name, but I know there's one um dev in particular who pretty much wrote like all of the Covenant uh during the era of Halo two. Yeah, I, I remember what you're talking about. I just watched the, the Halo 2 disc recently. Okay, look. We will pick this up after the cinematic. Come, it awaits your approval. That's our galaxy. We're beyond the rim. Two to the 18th light years from Galactic Center, to be precise. What is this place? The Ark. This is the Ark? I had always assumed it was part of a shield installation, but it seems I was mistaken. That's a first. Not at all. While I had a complete understanding of Installation 04, my makers wisely limited my knowledge of all other strategic facilities. Compartmentalization, in case I was ever captured by the Flood. Can you tell me where we are exactly? Here. And truth? Near one of the Ark's superluminal communication arrays, I'm afraid. Unfortunate, the meddler has triggered a barrier, a defensive perimeter around the Ark's core. The barrier will be difficult to disable. How odd that my makers would place such a comprehensive defense around a single... Oh my. What is it? Phantom! Spark, move. 
We must get past that barrier, or the method will destroy it all. And we're back. Can I, I want to ask yeah. a quick, quick question on that. Um, when he when he said, "Oh my," I was kind of I wasn't really paying attention. What was he referencing? Um, I the, that there's a ring in the center. Yeah, but you you can see whenever you get like an undershot of that of that hologram, you can see the purple ring under there. Oh okay. Yeah. Now you know how earlier on I was talking about keep talking and how it's just better for the narrative, blah blah. Now that was a perfect example of him just asking the brief questions and we get answers, you know. Where yeah. are we? What is this? You know, just little things and you know, it it's just better on. Oh yeah, it does there's this this level of detail this level of detail is just, like, is just wonderful <laughs> for lack of a because I can't think of anything else other way to phrase it. But I do have to say, um, and I bring this up in the article series I'm writing, Deal's pretty silent. And, you know, he's out of art. In Halo 2, he displayed a lot of reverence and concern about the rings. You know, he remarked how he destroyed one, which pretty much got him fucked over. Um, but, you know, he's on the art. This is near equivalent to being yep. in, in the flesh. And he's not really... Do you know, saying, saying it or doing anything. anything. Yeah. yeah. I it's, yeah I mean, you could also make that argument about um, I can't remember the name of the character that Persico is is um, like Untha something. Uh, I should know his name. No, that's the purple one. This one's like Intro. Yeah, Intro Sroa. Like, I just did something about it. It's cool, actually. There's uh, another uh, question that uh, uh, Catalog recently answered about uh, that these two characters are basically like some are, are diplomats, or more or less. Yeah, there seems to be a landmine. How Bungie included them, but you know, didn't really feel like doing much with them. In this, especially in the cutscenes, yeah, you never see them at all. Like, you were talking about how the Arbiter never reacts. And, like, especially, I would think. Uh, you know, both intro or, um, sorry, yeah, yeah, intro or, uh, or Uze would, would both, like, really react, because they didn't go through that same, like, you know, discovery, or journey of discovery that the Arbiter did, they just kind of said, you know, all of a sudden the Covenant's a bad thing, so let's rebel, so they in particular should have a lot to say about what's going on here. Now, if you guys notice, I'm pretty sure you do, because it's kind of obvious. Look at how, look at that. Look how deep the waterfall it is. It makes you wonder, oh, yeah. is, this, is this going to the core? Is this a cooling system? I think this was a power system, but uh, they, they talk about it uh, in the description for the level construct, because we're right above that. Or I think oh. we're either right above, we're either right above it or right below it, something like that. They're, this is in the same section as that as that particular uh, map. Did we not kill us? Kill something? Is there? Yeah, I hear enemy? brute somewhere. Oh wait, there it is. I found it. It's a stealth. Yeah, it's a stealth brute that made its way down here. <laughs> okay, now we're done. All right, so that is pretty much the end of the level. ETA, damn quick! Stand by for pickup. <laughs> oh, Johnson, you're so funny. Burn or not. Commander. Johnson, look sharp. I got it. No, don't shoot. They mean us no harm. Those units have a priority task. Oh, yeah? Then what might that be? I really can't say. Not for sure. But if you allow me to find a terminal closer to the core. We must keep the problem there on my own sides. But what about your construct? Your solution to the flood? With more data, I am right. right. We have priorities. Until we kill Truth, stop the rings from firing. Nothing else matters. Oh, beautiful. Great. Yeah. That was fun. 
Definitely, this is this has definitely been my favorite Let's Lore so far. All right, guys, that was the arc. Thanks again for to Me I Mendicant Bias and Persico Twelve for joining me again. Mendicant Bias and uh, Media Bias, respectively, from the Halo Archive. Be sure to check them out. Give your farewell, guys. All right. Well, hey, thanks for the invite. Yeah, thanks for having. Thank yeah, thanks for coming. This has been Halo Cannon, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means a lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and maybe share it around on whatever social media you choose. Your support is greatly appreciated. I cannot stress that enough. Thanks for watching.